Hello, my victims. Ooh, I'm sorry. I mean, you know, beta testers and customers. <laughs> so you bought my rocket, the hammer, or you're beta testing it for me. Um, if that's the case, uh, this is how you put the rocket together. Basically, you print one of everything in the, in the files. Every All the files you get, print one of each. Um, you may wish, we'll go over it later, but you may wish to print two seg lug instead of a seg lug and a seg. I'll go over what this means. So, um, most of these files are called seg and then something. So, seg means segment. I keep the name short because some printers don't like long file names. So, um, this is the fin can, or it might be called just the hammer. Um, this is called seg lug because it has lugs. This is called seg web because it has a web at the top to keep your parachute from falling all the way to the bottom of the rocket. Seg nose is because it interfaces with the nose coupler. That piece there. So the seg nose has threads on the bottom, but a slip fit on the top. That's the bottom of your rocket. The top of your rocket is this. So this is seg, or you can print a seg lug. Then the coupler goes on the bottom, nose cone goes on the top, that threads together as one unit. The two slide together, and that is your rocket. Now, of course, this rocket is configurable. It's all modular. You can move these parts around as long as they make sense. So I did this in order to um, allow me to fit all these different segments. If you want the rocket longer, print more segs. You can print another seg, make the rocket another 200 millimeters longer. Print two more, and it's 400 millimeters longer. You can make it six feet tall if you want. It structurally will hold up to that, no problem. Um, now, uh, the, uh, now the, your fin can might have lugs on the bottom. If it does, if you can line them up, great. If they don't line up, just snip them off. I found out I can make them line up about the first 10 times I put them together, and then the plastic begins to loosen up, and they start to move out of position. So I've just abandoned that altogether, and now I just use this seg lug here. If you're worried about the wind pushing the rocket, if you fly in windy conditions, print a second seg lug instead of a seg and put it up here. Because this is the nose gun part, this part can rotate. So you'll be able to rotate it to align the two sets of lug um, on the rocket. I'm also going to update the files and put 1010 conformal rail buttons on the side. So you'll be able to fly it either way. Um, so that's basically it for that. Now we need to work on the fin can. The fin can includes three other parts inside. You have the thrust ring, you have the motor mount, and you have the part you have to provide, a 29 millimeter paper tube. A 29 millimeter paper tube would be glue, is the only part of the entire rocket that's glued. So in the top of here, there is a seat for the thrust ring to sit against. And it's also designed to center inside of there like that, except from the other side, of course. Okay. So you're going to take a piece of body tube about six inches longer than this. So you're going to need about, um, what, um, 400 millimeters of body tube, roughly. This is 200 and 25 millimeters an inch. So you need um, six more inches. That's 150 millimeters, so about 350 millimeters of body tube, about an extra six inches. Um, you can, if you have a full length of body tube, just use a full length of body tube. This way you can cut it off exactly where you need it and you don't waste any of your tubing. Um, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna slide this on top of your motor mount tube with about two inches of tube sticking out the top. After the epoxy, because you're high power motors, don't use CA, after the epoxy dries, you're gonna drop this in here with the body tube attached to it and you're gonna grab it from the other end and you're gonna pull it and seat it. There you go. And it should sit there evenly and stick out the top a little bit. You wanna make sure that's fully seated. Your body tube is now sticking out the end. You take the motor mount, slide it over the body tube and thread it into the rocket. All the way down until it's seated. It does, it does there is a little gap at the bottom, that's normal. You'll feel it stop when it's seated. Now, take a pencil, mark exactly where this plastic aligns with that body tube. So you got to take a mark and make sure it's something that you can repeat outside of this rocket. And unthread this body tube, pull motor mount tube. You pull the whole motor mount tube assembly out of the rocket. So you now have this piece with the body tube already epoxied to it, and you have this piece. Slide it once again back over top of the body uh, motor mount tube. Get it into the position where it needs to be to be able to thread into the rocket. All right, but first, rough the tube up, add some epoxy, slide this down on top of it. As you slide it down on top of it, be sure to line up these holes 
so that they're relatively in line with each other. What you don't want is them like that, because that's going to cause the shock cord to wrap around your tube on the inside, which is going to cause a torsion on your rocket if that shock cord yanks really hard. Probably won't do anything, but best practice is to line those holes up. Get that tube into position so it's lined up with the mark that you made on the tube. That's important, because if these aren't the right distance apart, then either the motor mount, you're actually, I guess you're better to have them slightly further apart than not all the way. You know, we're talking millimeters here. Because if you're too far, this thrust ring won't seat against the thrust ring inside there, the shoulder. And now you're smaller motors, who cares? But you stick like an I-205 in this thing and you might care. Because <laughs> these threads would be the only thing holding that motor in place. So you want that thrust ring sitting against that shoulder up top there. Once that's dry, you're going to have all this body tube sticking out. Well, you got to cut off the excess, but don't forget to account for how much you need for whatever filament, um, for whatever retention method you're going to use. You know, Aeropack, 3D printed, SDs, whatever 29 millimeter motor retention you decide to use. Um, if you want to try printing one, I have 3D printable versions as well. Um, you cut, leave enough excess for whatever retention method you're going to use to attach your motor retainer and then cut it off and then you're good that's it this is now a modular removable swappable motor mount assembly i'm for my basic rockets i'm going to try to keep the geometry the same if i can and that will allow you to take this motor mount and put it in any of my rockets so you don't have to keep making new motor mounts <laughs> especially nice when you have different sizes and you start swapping them um now, to thread the rocket, you're going to run shock cord from the top through this hole, out one of these holes, back up the other hole, back up through this hole, and either tie it up here or run double lines out, however you decide to do it. Then you install that assembly into the rocket. Really, come on. Play nice. Sometimes those threads are a pain. <laughs> it's a double start, so um, a triple start would be better, but then the threads would be weirder inside. Um, you then take this. Where's the tubes? There you go. You run your shock cord through the seg lug, thread it in place, run your shock cord through the seg web. I would run it through the center, the hole in the middle of the seg web, then thread it onto that. Then run your shock cord through the seg nose, and you're done. I would make your shock cord at minimum six feet longer than the rocket. So after your shock cord gets to here, another six feet, at least, minimum. And I'd probably go maybe even 12. Um, so 12 feet of shock cord sticking out of the rocket. Put a loop in the end of it, tie it off. This part here, same deal. You take your coupler out, you run the shock cord, separate shock cord, say three feet long. Um... Up one hole, out the other hole, tie it off. And then you thread it back into here. And now you're going to have two separate pieces with two separate shock cords with loops on the end. You put a loop on the end of your parachute. And then you use a quick link. Um, you can 3D print them if you want. If you want to play around with that, I have designed a 3D printable quick link. This is more than strong enough for rocketry. Um, you do need to make sure you whatever plastic, you're going to have to do a couple of test prints to get the threads right. Basically, you print the quick link. And then you adjust the XY dimension of the closure until it fits. Um, I'll, I'll make a totally separate video for that. But um, you need to use a plastic that's a little flexible because you got to bend it to be able to put the closure on since they print as two separate pieces. But the reason you use a quick link is to retain the modularity of the rocket. If you don't have a quick link in there, then this becomes a long chain that's all physically connected together that you can't separate. And then what if you break this? What if you want to lengthen it? What if you break this? You know, what if you want to print a new piece of body tube with, with um, rail buttons on it instead? Or no rail buttons because you want to use a tower, you know, however you want to fly it. You can do that. By having the quick link, you can separate these segments and you can run the shock cord through, separate all this, change it out, change out the motor mount. So, for example, I'll have a 38 millimeter motor mount made for this. So, you'll be able to unscrew this whole motor mount, slide it out, slide in the 38 millimeter motor mount and put that in there. Or maybe a three 24 millimeter motor cluster, put 3D engines, 3D engines in there. Um, different things that you can do that maintains the modularity. Now, you can also try different configurations. If you want to make this six feet tall, just print more sags and just keep going <laughs> as long as you want within limits of bendability, of course. 
Um, if you're going to go that long, you might want to have the coupler at the top, you know, lengthen this segment, don't lengthen this segment, just make this segment longer, because if you um, have, if you're too much length at the couple, as this gets longer and this gets longer, it becomes more bendable, and you want to keep the coupled section relatively short to avoid that bending. So the threaded parts will stay pretty stiff. You can make, you could probably make this six, ten feet tall if you put a big enough motor in it. Um, you can also try, you know, mini mag style. You know, if you want to, if you want to try this out for me and let me know if it's stable, I would love to know if this configuration is stable. So fin can with motor mount, and then we take the coupler and we get rid of all the body segments except for the seg nose. So put the coupler directly into the nose and then we get rid of all this and we have seg nose directly into the fin can and then nose cones there you go a little mini mag I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's stable i don't know <laughs> if you want to uh, i don't even have any 29 millimeter motors so i can't even spin test it and um, i gotta see if i can put this in a simulator see you know how short can i make this and it still be stable they're pretty they're pretty big fins, but I don't know. CG is, well, CG's not too bad. without the. That's without the motor, of course. CG's about there without the motor. Um, so with the motor, the CG's probably going to go back to here. That's borderline. I don't, I don't know if that'll be stable. So I might need to put, you know, an ounce in the nose or something like that. But um, easy to do. Add whatever you want to it. Seal the bad boy back up again. There you go. <laughs> so I, I I would love to know if somebody's willing to test it. I would love to know if that configuration is stable. Probably going to need nose weight. But there you go. It's, it's all modular. You could um, take this seg section here. And you could do whatever you want with this. So you could make this into an av bay, a camera bay, you know, avionics, altimeter, whatever you want. You could put stuff in here. And you know, have the nose cone on this end and the coupler on this end. So you have all this volume plus the volume of the nose cone to do whatever you want with. Now that's kind of the whole fun of this is it's all modular. You can do interesting things like that with the modularity of this. Without having to build a whole new rocket, you just rearrange the segments or print new segments and reuse the parts you have. So it's kind of cool. Uh, let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, ask down below or contact me by whatever method you're currently talking to me.